In today's episode, don't want to listen to someone below your pay grade? Enjoy missing your promotion. Okay, we'll play free for all. Reason for overtime must be verbatim. So let's get started. Don't want to listen to someone below your pay grade? Enjoy missing your promotion. This took place about 30 years ago, but I was just reminded of it while talking with some of the other gray hairs where I work. Dramatis Personae HH equals me BTD equals big time designer GGB equals good guy boss I started with my company over 30 years ago. My original position was as a draftsman. I hand drew maps, diagrams, and engineering documents that were turned into blueprints for production. The general consensus was that draftsmen like me were lower than dirt. Most of us had vocational training but no college degrees. Our usual work process was that a customer came to a designer and asked for something to be built. The designer consulted with an engineer and then sketched out the design and sent it to a draftsman to have a set of construction blueprints produced. The completed prints were then mailed off to the head office in a different city for review and approval. Any design that failed the approval process got mailed back to the designer for rework, and the process started all over again. Over the first few years on the job I continued my education. I took courses specific to our industry and took in-house classes to better master our company construction standards. I steadily gained the trust and respect of the engineers and designers that I worked with. That is, until the company hired Big Time Designer. Mr. Big Time Designer was young, he was well educated, and he was well connected to upper management. The first time one of his jobs hit my desk, I stopped and stared. There was a glaring flaw that violated industry and company standards. Rather than spend time drawing up prints that would be automatically rejected, I took the job package back to him and pointed out what would need to be fixed for approval. He angrily agreed and took back the job to fix the errors. I thought everything was great. Until I got the next job from big time. This job was also going to immediately fail the approval process, so I headed back to his end of the building for a chat. This time the big time designer was not having it. HH, you are a lowly draftsman. I am a designer. I don't have to take instruction from you, he shouted. I want you to draw up exactly what I design and submit it that way. If I'm going to be corrected, it will be by someone above my pay grade and not below. Good guy boss, department head, heard the commotion from his office and came over to see what the yelling was about. The big time designer explained that I was trying to correct his work and not just drawing up his jobs as designed. At this point I started to try to defend myself and explain that I was trying to save the work and time that a rejected design would cause, but the boss cut me off. With an evil twinkle in his eye, good guy boss said HH you just do exactly as this designer requests. If he wants the head office to correct his work, then that is just fine. Cue the malicious compliance. From that point on, I did exactly as directed. I sent off flawed designs for approval. The process for each rejection took about one week round trip. Big time designers jobs began to fall farther and farther behind. Some of the jobs were rejected three or four times. I started getting calls from the head office. Hey, HH, why are you sending us junk, they asked. I explained the situation and the head office called Mr. Good Guy Boss. He confirmed that BTD was running his own show and only wanted feedback from people up the food chain and was rejecting input from lowly draftsmen regardless of their experience. The cycle continued for about three months. Right up until time for annual performance reviews. Mr. Big Time was denied for promotion to senior designer. Over the last quarter of the year his jobs had failed to meet customer and company deadlines. His file contained complaints from the head office for repeatedly submitting projects that did not only fail our own corporate standards, but didn't meet industry standards either. A few weeks after review time the department head, good guy boss, paid a visit to my cubicle. He plopped an envelope on my drafting table with a thank you letter that was copied to my employee file. 
There was also a small cash bonus. He had been looking for a way to nail Mr. Big Time and take him down a peg. The big time designer had powerful friends and our good guy boss was reluctant to try too hard to put him in his place. By obeying BTD's wishes I had given the boss ammo needed to give him a legit bad review. Okay, we'll play free for all. So this is going back a ways. We're talking mid-90s, college campus, late night computer games in the lab. A couple of friends and I like to play Duke Nukem 3D and we could run it together as a networked game in the computer lab. So we'd go to the 24-hour lab late at night, when it was deserted. Start up a game and have fun. They usually wanted to play free for all, aka deathmatch. I don't like deathmatch, more on that later. I would rather play cooperative and go through the storyline. So I would refuse to play unless we played cooperative, and they would acquiesce because they didn't want to play with just the two of them. I had the maps memorized and knew where all of the power-ups and monsters would appear, so I would make a plan to go through the map and minimize damage. I would also let them know where the power-ups were so they could reload and heal. One night, at one point, we had to open a door, and I knew there were two monsters behind it waiting to ambush. So I told them to hold off for a moment. I was going to open the door, back up quickly, and launch a rocket in there. I did all of that. But the moment I launched the rocket, they ran in front of me to try to go in the door. Boom. Both of them are now dead and respawning. They are pissed, saying I killed them. I'm pissed, because they ran in when should have waited. They say it's deathmatch now, and attack me. You really want deathmatch? It's on. Like I said, I have the map memorized. That also means I know where the hidden spots are, which provides good sniping areas, as well as respawning the good ammo. They don't. That's why I don't like deathmatch, it gives me an unfair advantage. They wanted deathmatch, I gave them deathmatch. I don't remember how many times I had killed each of them, but it was at least two dozen each before they quit. They hadn't managed to take me out even once. They didn't talk to me for several days. The next time we played, they said we were playing cooperative. And turning on the friendly fire option, so that it wasn't possible for our guns to hurt each other. I guess they didn't want to unleash that again. Reason for overtime must be verbatim. So we've recently got a new manager. Nice enough guy etc, but he's from a police background and new to the private sector. Was hired by a director that favors highly controlling, micromanaging people who is terrible at his job and has run the department into the ground. Thinks this is the best way to make sure job gets done and has recently resigned. Modern day policing is a massive bureaucracy filled with soft, egocentric macho types who mostly don't know what they're doing and don't know any other way of doing things other than what they were taught at police school, which isn't that hard to get into. If you outrank someone, that's all that matters quite like the military. Long story short, I recently set up a high-priority covert operation to purchase something that was stolen from a client, I work in the private sector. It was a massive success that I largely carried off on my own steam with little input required, though of course tons were given by my new manager who has never done this kind of work before, consistently throughout. Anyway, it was a great success, and we came away with more than what we originally needed. Quite a bit more. I was thanked profusely by multiple people, including the manager, for my work. So now we're at the stage of submitting my overtime payment form. It's all pretty straightforward, log your dates, hours and reasons why, sign your name, and get Big Boss to sign it off. Apparently Big Boss will only sign it off if the reason for the overtime is recorded on the form verbatim. The catch? His verbatim request doesn't fit on the PDF form they require we use. Knowing that these guys are insecure and controlling, and will not accept any deviation from the instructions slash orders issued, I copy slash paste the verbatim reason, as spelled out by them, into the relevant column. Fill everything else out and export. Takes a little while and is a bit of a pain. But I send it off. Oops, Robocop manager spots that the verbatim reason for the overtime doesn't completely fit, asks me to do it again. 
So I paraphrase the reason so that it does fit, and there is no ambiguity as to what the reason was, it's all crystal clear, just the wording is different and more concise. Takes a while and I have to redo the whole form again, as that is how Acrobat PDFs work when you add a signature. Oops this isn't good enough again so I ask him to just submit anyway, and if it doesn't get authorized then I will redo it, because obviously they'll know what this refers to. We're a small team and the form is quite clear the way I've written it, even a third party with no involvement would understand based on what I wrote. No can do, it will not be authorized unless the verbatim reason is on the form thanks again for all your hard work as we've said before. Okay, F asterisk card. Here you go. I copy paste the reason everywhere it makes sense and is possible across the form, including in the document title and file name. Thanks very much, please sign this off, and I hope there is no confusion as to what is being authorized here, you useless pencil pusher. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.